Hello, welcome back to Samson's Judo. I must apologize for uh, losing the momentum. As you all know, Wayuki was injured with his collarbone. I'm very happy to say that he's actually back in health again and we can get things working. Uh, today we hope to cover a turnover technique uh, resulting into Utihishiki Jujigitami cross arm lock. I hope you're going to like it. It's slightly different, so uh, pay attention to detail. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. The three techniques that you just saw, which were rollover techniques, were all working towards uh, Udi Hishiki and Juju And we're going to do now just break it down and explain to you how they work. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to show you the first technique, nice and slow, and then we'll break it down and show you how you should be practicing it. Okay, it's very nice and easy. The first technique here, we're at, uh, working on Uki while he's on all fours, crouching position. The first thing I need to do is to secure a grip under his head here. So I need to point my fingers towards his back, get all my fingers inside the jacket to control his neck muscles. I need to grab the belt and I'm pushing Uki down into the mat so he knows I'm on top of him. I mustn't allow him to have too much movement, so I keep pressure onto him. I step over my right foot and I squeeze onto his ribs. What I do with my right hand, I've got to come under the shoulder and reach for his elbow. We just come up. I'm coming under the shoulder and I'm reaching for his wrist, sorry, not elbow, here. And that's very, very important, I need to control that. Once I've got his wrist, I need to pull his wrist into his belt so it's close to his body. I need to protect myself. If I don't do that, Uki will grab my leg. So I need to grab the wrist and control it into his body. So I've got the lapel, thumb outside, fingers in. I step over with the right, then I find space for my right hand to come underneath and grab the wrist. From here, what I need to do is to use the hand, holding the wrist, and the hand behind his lapel to create space. What I'm trying to do is to get my left foot over the top and underneath his head. That's very hard to do if someone's head is on the mat. Also could end up bruising his ears. That's how we end up with cauliflower ears. So what we need to do is to create space. So using both hands, it's a very quick jerk by using your leg muscles and your shoulders and your back the whole part of your body working together. Don't try just to lift with your arms, but use your legs. Imagine you're doing a squat. This becomes very powerful. So as you lift up, you create space around this area here. Automatically, I keep him there, my foot comes over the top, and then I push his head backwards, across here. That weakens his position, which allows space under, my, under his stomach for my right foot to go through. I ended up on my right shoulder, and then from here, I extend my leg and I walk onto the shoulder. From here, take the arm up, lean backwards, squeeze your legs together, take the wrist, and then use your heels to raise your hips and apply Jujikatama. What's very important is that your legs squeeze very, very tight, which flexes his muscles and makes the arm lock come in quicker. Another important reason why you should have your legs open, if I make a mistake with my hands, Uki will pull his arm away and roll out. If you keep your legs tight, if I slip with my hands, as it pulls, it gets trapped between the legs, then I can come up and take the arm. So it's very, very important that you squeeze, raise, and apply the pressure 
for all the hishiki jujiki time. What we're trying to do is apply pressure against the joint. And a little golden rule I like to use is wherever the little finger's pointing, apply the pressure wherever the finger's pointing. If the finger's pointing this way, you go this way. If the finger's pointing this way, you go this way. And that tends to direct, when you're teaching as well, the pressure point against the elbow. Do not hold your hands together. Try and hold your wrist together across here. Don't hold the, ja the jacket. If you hold the jacket like some people do, Ruki will pull his arm through and there we've lost the arm lock. So I need to hold the wrist. Another golden rule in judo, the straighter his arm is, the weaker his arm is. If you allow him to start bending his elbow, he will get stronger and stronger and stronger. So what I need to do is basically try and, and dislocate his shoulder. While I've got the wrist, pull the arm towards your face, keeping his arm straight as possible. This weakens his position and it makes Udihishiki Jujutami so much more effective. And then a little raising of the hips against the joint, Uki will submit. We'll just show you that one more time. Control the lapel, step over, take the wrist, use your whole body to lift up, step over the top, keep controlling with the hand so he doesn't, he's going to try to drop back down again. Drop on your right shoulder, turn over, and your own leverage will turn Uki over into a very beautiful Udi Hishigitrigatami, which is cross arm lock in Japanese. Okay, uh, we're going to complicate things a little bit more. Uh, uh, this is what could happen if somebody is a little bit more experienced and has quicker reflexes. If Uki feels threatened and I step over, he will normally collapse and go flat on his stomach. This is to protect himself. He feels a bit threatened, so he tries to close all the gaps. Now, because I've stepped over my right leg first, something very important happens. If we turn around, if my right leg wasn't here, Uki will bring his, his elbow into his uh, belt, into his ribcage, making this very hard for me to actually work. By having your foot over, I'm stopping Uki bringing his elbow into his waist, which creates a little bit of space between his, uh, his armpit. This is enough for me to take my hand and work and grab his wrist. As exactly the same as the first technique, I'm going to lift higher this time. What happens? I use the lapel, I bring my left foot up, and then I use my back to lift the cap much higher. For a fraction of a second, it gives me enough time to get my leg over, twist, take cookie over, wrap myself onto his arm, squeeze tight, and apply Udi Hishigi Jujigatami. It's exactly the same technique. So it can be done while Uki is flat on his stomach. It can also be done while Uki is uh, on his hands and knees. Depending who reacts the quickest, the technique is exactly the same. We'll just show it both of them one more time. Pay attention. The first one is crouching position. Up, over, turn, The second technique, we have a responsive reaction from Uki, goes collapses. Up, lift, over, turn, Uki gets up. It's a very beautiful technique, requires lots of skill, lots of awareness, and it's very, very flowing. You've got to be confident, it needs a lot of practice. It's got to be done instinctively. You can't waste time, because time will give Uki a chance to get out. Good control, good gripping, good turning, and this uh, will work. Uh, judo is a gamble. If you're quick, it will make it work. Uh, the third technique we're going to show you is a slight variation. I'll do it slowly first, just so you remember. Hook is flat, push the arm out. Drop the elbow from here, the elbow comes across, forces Uki, just bring your head, the elbow inwards, forcing Uki's neck to come up. 
And this creates a little bit of space under his head and the tatami. And that's the space I want. By applying the pressure with the elbow, come up with your right foot, keep pushing, keep holding the arm. What you need to do, you need a bit of flexibility. Your right leg comes over, slide, turn, and back into Juju Gitarra. Just show you that one more. This is very nice. At this stage, Yuki has got his arms close together because nothing's stopped him from bringing his arm into his, uh, into his hips. So what we need to do is to use the back of the hand and put the elbow inside your hip. Cross hip. So your hand goes into your hip. So as I push, I'm not relying just on the hand. My whole body weight will be pushing against his elbow. What we need to do is to open him up. Hip, push. So we got the elbow up. As soon as we do that, move your right leg slightly further in, just to trap it. Your right hand slightly comes underneath, and we grab exactly the same as the first technique. From here, I let go from the back of his head, come across his head. Do not hit him. You apply pressure by pushing Wookie up. The pressure allow, uh, allow Wookie to lift his head up. Come up with your right leg, very, very tight. And then a very quick reaction with your left foot. A one turn. And you have Udi Hijiki Juji Gatami. One more time. Let's a hip, push, come over. Across, push, and then a quick over with the left foot. While you've got his head up off the ground, your left foot comes over. Use your body turn to turn, squeeze, Udi Hijiki Juji Gatami. And as always, we always emphasize in judo, especially high grades, whatever you do right side, do left side, so your judo develops that much greater. These are basically two types of rollovers, three different scenarios for you to work, experiment, and see whether you like them or not. Thank you very much.